Gino, um, VP of Stakeholder Engagement in North Africa. Um, my colleague uh, Nora uh, could not be with us. She has to go back to, uh, to the US for an urgent matter. But uh, uh, nevertheless, we are uh, happy to have our panelists here. They are all around. Um, this panel, of course, is about the, about the global public interest of the internet. And um, our panelists are actually going to um, take us through some of aspects of the public interest and also um, introduce, um, well, the, the, the um, ICANN's um, public responsibility, responsibility framework. But of course, uh, we also do have panelists who are going to actually um, showcase, you know, their own, uh, from their own personal experiences. Um, of course, they are up there, Nick Quino from my far uh, uh, left. Um, well, from University of Cape Coast, Ghana, but of course, Nick is wearing, obviously, so many hats. Uh, he was uh, chairing the, the strategy panel, who will be talking about later on. Uh, Nevin Tofik uh, from, uh, from Egypt, who uh, was also part of the panel, and uh, Nevin is going to give us also uh, some uh, uh, aspects you know, of, the, uh, pub, um, uh, of the public interest of the internet, and uh, maybe especially what they'll be doing in, uh, in Egypt. And then we do have um, Rinalia, uh, Rinalia uh, 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 from uh, um, well, uh, he's managing director of Compass Rose. Uh, also, uh, I can board actually uh, because she will be resuming on uh, I can board uh, on this um, I can meeting in uh, Los Angeles. Um, and then Titi Akinsami from Google, and she's be bringing her own perspective on um, corporate responsibility. Uh, this workshop, in fact, is. Of course, I'm going to discuss the issues of public inter interest and public responsibility and uh, how different organizations in the internet governance ecosystem um, have over the year evolved in this um, respect. Of course, different organizations have developed different approaches. And uh, uh, some of the things that um, come to mind sometimes is you know, how do you define those things. But I don't think that we are here to, to define you know, public interest as per se. I was on one of the, the discussion list, and uh, uh, people were talking about you know, public interest. And the one comment you know, was that, well, public interest is a dangerous term. How is it dangerous? Certainly because it uh, may mean you no know, different thing to different people. Um, but today we are going to actually focus more on um, uh, its relation to the internet and internet organizations. Uh, with that, what I would like to be doing um, right now is, of course, our panelists will have you know, their own you know, share of the time, uh, but they will have a discussion later on, because that's also what matters. Uh, so uh, without um, further ado, I would like to uh, call upon Ni uh, to, to start by providing you know, his uh, perspective on this. Uh, yeah. So Ni, please. OK. Which one do you want? Should I move forward? We can just move forward. Good, I'll get yours. This is what she said. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre. Um, uh, well, we had to start by taking a look at what ICANN was doing, because we did not want to go and propose things without understanding what ICANN had been doing over the years. So one of the first things that we did was to take a look at existing programs, uh, especially in the regional strategies area. And from that point, we, we observed that we could develop relevant capacity uh, resources and internet infrastructure in a coordinated, comprehensive, and sustainable fashion. Uh, focus on addressing the needs of a very, every specific region. The regional strategies are based on the need for further capacity building and development. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the regional strategies are based on the need for further capacity building 
and development of key regions, I can, through the development of public responsibility department, uh, has incorporated strategic objectives to be pursued through four primary tracks. And the four tracks that are being explored in this first uh, effort are education, uh, localization, and language services, uh, participation in the internet, uh, global cooperation and development, and next generation uh, projects. The four tracks with education, the intention is to increase access to training, capacity building programs, uh, knowledge sharing, and raise awareness of ICANN's role and mandate. With respect to localization and language services, ICANN should continue to make information available in languages other than English uh, to facilitate a diverse and robust participation that enhances the effectiveness of the multi-stakeholder model. Uh, for next generation projects to raise awareness and encourage the participation of the next generation in internet governance. And lastly, participation in the global cooperation and development to continue to collaborate with governments, international organizations, civil society organizations, and private sector to build trust and encourage participation in the global multi-stakeholder model. Defining the global public interest of the internet and the, and the work of the panel for the public responsibility framework. Uh, the process was first uh, take a look at the strategy panel on the public responsibility framework, the meetings and the public consultations and the development of the report. And the report was released in May 2014. And uh, since then, uh, ICANN is exploring the department for four focus areas since the London ICANN meeting. And the goals are to develop objectives and milestones that promote the global public interest and participation in the work of ICANN. Uh, propose a framework for implementation of ICANN's role uh, that involves the global public interest, builds capacity within the ICANN community, increases the base of diverse and knowledgeable and engaged ICANN stakeholders, and of course provide advice on programs and initiatives that help achieve the ab above objectives. Uh, with respect to definitions, ICANN defines the global public interest in relation to the internet as ensuring the internet becomes and continues to be stable, inclusive, and accessible across the globe so that all may enjoy the benefits of a single and open internet. In addressing its public responsibility, ICANN must build trust in the internet and its governance ecosystem. The current ICANN work, we did an inventory as was mentioned, and you can find more details in the report. Uh, we also took a good look at the regional strategies, all of which emanated from the ICANN overall uh, goals. And of course, the departmental work that was ongoing was also studied. The recommendations were to review and where appropriate, formalize the approaches, the programming, and projects serving the public interest undertaken throughout ICANN's departments seek out partnerships in the internet ecosystem that will strengthen and support ICANN's work in serving the global public interest. Create specific public responsibility programs which fall within the scope of the focus areas outlined in the framework uh, report. And continually review how best ICANN can engage and communicate with the public in relation to serving the public interest. Uh, establish a focus department that should review and, where appropriate, formalize the approaches, programming, and projects serving the public interest undertaken throughout ICANN's department. Uh, seek out partnerships in the internet ecosystem that will strengthen and support ICANN's work in serving the global public interest that provide funding and expertise assistance to qualified partners. Create specific public responsibility programs which fall within the scope 
of the focus areas outlined in the framework report and continually review how best I can, can engage and communicate with the public in relation to serving the public interest. Uh, considering the broad nature of the public interest and after reviewing the initiatives currently undertaken by ICANN, activities should continue under the remit of their current departments, while the de development and public responsibility department will take a narrower focus on promoting public responsibility through the formalization of activities where appropriate. I think I pause here. Thank you very much, Ni, uh, for introducing, introducing us to this, um, um, this framework that uh, I can, you know, um, uh, came up with. Of course, we will be discussing this um, in detail later on. Uh, but let me turn over to Nevin. Uh, Nevin, you actually joined this ICANN Public Responsibility Panel some time ago. But I also know that you are from, um, I mean, your background is from a, a developmental sort of uh, um, area. Uh, how do you evaluate this experience and um, how do you visualize the progress you know, in uh, pursuing public interest among different organizations? Thank you very much, Pierre, and uh, good morning to everyone. Thank you first for inviting me to this um, workshop, and uh, thank you for inviting me to be part, actually, of the public responsibility panel of uh, ICANN. I'm not part of the ICANN community. And uh, when I was actually suggested, I was wondering uh, why are they choosing me to be part of this panel? I was very scared. I'm still scared. <laughs> I don't uh, master the jargon, I'm not a technical person, but I thought that maybe what I can want to do at this particular phase of its development is to open up a little bit to other people from different backgrounds. So this is what I've been trying to do um, uh, in the discussions actually uh, that took place in the public responsibility panel. Uh, and let me reflect a little bit on our discussions, which uh, are actually uh, have um, developed into what Ni has presented a moment ago. At the very beginning, as an outsider, someone who is not really sharing the core interest of uh, ICANN, it was uh, difficult for me to communicate. It was I was a little bit trying to become uh, an ICANN uh, converted, uh, which I wasn't exactly sure what I should be doing actually to be converted, but uh, I tried a little bit to know about ICANN which is uh, definitely uh, a must. Um, and then uh, I thought that I should uh, stick to the core interests, DNS, IANA, all these issues. But I felt that in the discussions, what um, the members of the panel were looking for is also for a fresh perspective. How can I can, uh, as an organization, reach out to other people who were not uh, traditionally part of its constituency or of its uh, community? And uh, that's why I was uh, actually suggesting more and more that we, we don't confine ourselves to uh, the specific corporate uh, responsibility of ICANN, but to open up more to the idea of global responsibility, where there is a large array of social activities that could be pursued uh, if an entity is seeking really to assume its social responsibility role. And we've be, I've been trying actually to convey this uh, idea throughout our discussions, and I, I felt that there was a, a, a very uh, uh, strong responsiveness uh, to this uh, thought. Um, when we talk about global responsibility, it allows us actually to look at uh, uh, what an organization can do from the perspective of the beneficiary and ask and wait actually for the beneficiary or expect the beneficiary to seek help, assistance, and it entails actually opening the door for a whole um, a new perspective from uh, uh, those who, who need such help. This is, I think it's a new policy or a new perspective for ICANN that might adopt or it might adopt with some reservations. I'm not, I'm not uh, really sure. Uh, however, yesterday uh, there was a, a, um, another workshop for ICANN and I recall um, a, a comment that Dr. Tariq Kamel made about uh, previous meetings of ICANN in Egypt. And he was saying uh, on the first day we had a good um, attendance, the ceremonial part. And then on the second day, 
there was very little people attending the ICANN meeting in Cairo, which shows that there is really a need to, to make uh, the work of ICANN known more and more to other segments um, uh, who could be actually interested and could be more mobilized and who would have also uh, a value added to the work that is already done. So if we look more um, to the regional engagement strategies from a perspective of global responsibility, and maybe open a little bit the plans. I, I've also heard about the different plans of the regional engagement strategies from Africa and from Middle East, and Beher is here, of course, and Pierre. Um, maybe what is needed is not just to focus on the core, core interest, just the immediate interest of ICANN, but have these immediate interests also ingrained in larger uh, developmental projects. This is, uh, this is an idea. Opening or, or enlarging the base for, of the beneficiaries to what uh, the ICANN is, deing, uh, is doing on the regional engagement strategies. Uh, Ni mentioned the four programs that we want, that the ICANN is planning to focus on. And my suggestion, if we are talking about education, and of course uh, the, the main uh, technical um, uh, capacity building that ICANN is offering, that this could be part not um, uh, just of uh, a, a program uh, uh, focusing only on, on uh, the technical issues, but it could also be part of a larger e-learning program with other institutions that are working uh, in this field. And this might lead to, um, uh, of course, more benefits and uh, more uh, a better positioning uh, for the organization. The same applies on uh, the issue of fellowship and next generation programs. And I had a very uh, specific comment about uh, the fellowships that ICANN is uh, offering. And I know that many of my colleagues in Egypt have benefited from these fellowships. Actually, we're very happy for that. But what is also important about that is to see how these fellows, what they are doing with the learning experience they got out of their journey um, in ICANN events. If it's possible to create a network of these young fellows who have uh, actually attended these special events and use this network actually to bring more people on board in the different countries. Um, Another point relates to uh, the participation in the global internet cooperation and development through responsibility, transparency, and accountability. And in this respect, uh, one of the things that I would like also to suggest is also the possibility of opening up to the other issues that are on the agenda of uh, maybe a forum like the Internet Governance Forum. We, ha we know that there are so many dynamic coalitions and that there are so many international organizations involved in these dynamic coalitions. Also having embedding some of the programs of social responsibility of ICANN uh, with the other programs can also uh, maybe yield different fruits uh, in this respect. Briefly, what, what I'm calling for is uh, to have these social responsibility uh, programs not uh, acting in a silos, uh, but to embed them in other projects or other programs with other uh, regional or international organization. This would lead to a reciprocity, opening up uh, the mass of beneficiaries, and also uh, it might lead to a better or a rational management of resources that are available. Um, I recall that one of the experiences I like to share with the ICANN panel where we, when we were discussing the strategy was our experience in Egypt, Egypt's ICT Trust Fund. And Egypt's ICT Trust Fund is a mechanism that we have created and where we're having different um, um, uh, organizations, uh, we call them partners, suggesting different projects that would be of help uh, to uh, NGOs, uh, to the masses. And these organizations can actually uh, ask for a special agenda and they can fund. Uh, what we're doing actually is to bring these different organizations on board together. So we don't have different organizations working alone, but we have them, many of them, cooperating together for a particular target. Let's say using the internet to enhance the, the performance of SMEs or uh, something that we are working currently on is reforming accessibility re through uh, the reform of IT clubs. So this is a, a very good channel, I think, that could be explored um, by uh, ICANN. Um, I have other comments, but maybe I, I would like to stop at this point and uh, leave the rest to the discussion. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Nevin, for bringing this uh, perspective, and especially um, being from, um, from Egypt, you've also elaborated on what you've been achieving over there. Thanks very much on that. Of course, um, uh, this also be a few questions, and you mentioned that we should, be, uh, we should not be acting in silos. Uh, one of the questions I would like to actually, I would like uh, Titi to uh, discuss is, um, well, how can organization in the internet governance ecosystem, you know, forge better collaboration in the global public interest agenda? Of course, Titi, you come from, um, uh, from Google. You are the, um, the public responsibility, uh, social responsibility, and also you are managing, you know, uh, government relations you know, at Google. What's your take on this, uh, please? Um, thank you very much. Uh, I will keep it as, as brief as possible. There are three key things that I think is critical if we are going to be looking at public interest from a different perspective. One is transparency. Um, I think the entire ICANN processes needs to be a lot more transparent. We need to um, also, second thing is simplicity. Um, in as much as we have a very complex environment and a complex structure already in place, and the conversations can come across as really intricate, I think it's even more critical for us to be able to better understand how we can share that messaging to, to those who are outside of the core circle and bring them on board. I think that would respond to a lot more of the issues that have been mentioned around uh, relevance. Um, third is uh, the need to step away from continuing replication of processes that exist elsewhere, but rather work towards more a lot of cooperation uh, across board. Now, one of the things I, I if, if we give the example of uh, the IANA transition that's currently happening, one of the critical things that needs to be in place is to ensure that in identifying, uh, in, in putting together the accountability process for the IANA transition, that should significantly be separate from the accountability structures that have been put in place for ICANN itself. Um, but, but I can also say this, that as Google, what is more critical that is that we get the transition right and not just have the transition for the sake of the transition. I wanted to just get that in really quickly as well. That's it for now. Thank you very much uh, for being quick, but uh, we'll be coming back to you on a few questions. Don't worry. Um, Rinalia, you will be joining ICANN board you know, in a few months, of course, but you are well known as a um, uh, kind of advocate for you know, um, public interest, and um, you also have this experience you know, of managing the GK, uh, GKP. Well, uh, what's your take on all of these questions? Thank you, Pierre. It is a pleasure for me to be here. And I speak completely in my personal capacity. Uh, and I was invited to share some thoughts. And I have some thoughts in terms of the initiative that uh, was presented and also a response to the question that has been posed. Um, the first remark that I would like to make is that the public interest can be very challenging to define. And the process for achieving that definition um, requires consultation uh, of all the affected stakeholders and all the interested parties. Now we're talking about the global public interest and that makes it even more challenging. And the fact that the initiative was able to come up with a definition of global public interest, that's quite uh, an achievement. And I think when looking at the public interest, you have to consider the challenge of the organization in terms of whether or not it is within scope or outside of the scope. And I think that this can be addressed by thinking about partnerships in trying to achieve a particular goal. Because there's, there are things that are within a particular remit or scope of the organization, and there are things that are outside of it but can contribute to the success of the organization. And through partnerships, you can achieve that. Now, going on to the question of how can organizations in the internet governance ecosystem forge better collaboration in the global public interest agenda, I will just draw back from my experiences in facilitating activities of sharing knowledge and building partnerships for close to a decade. I would say the first one is that the partners that are involved must have a shared interest in the goal, and the goal must be clear. Secondly, there must be recognition of each partner's organizational mandate and scope and there should be clarity of roles and responsibilities. And ideally, there must be complementarity of strengths and resources, because this will help you to have a better collaboration and to be more effective. Fifth, there must be open and effective communication, because this makes sure that trust is assured and there is no misunderstanding. Sixth, 
there must be shared risks and rewards. And rewards need not be financial. It could also be recognition or attribution to be fair to the partners that are involved. Seventh, there must be continuous joint learning amongst the partner. You must not be selfish about the knowledge. The knowledge needs to be shared. And there must be continuous improvements and adjustments in the collaborative effort based on what you have learned. Eighth, you must be open to expanding the partners in the collaboration as appropriate ones emerge to achieve global scale, because we are talking about the global public interest, and the scale is immense. And finally, you have to measure the impact and show that you have actually made a difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, um, Rinalia, for, uh, for this. And uh, you actually are suggesting a few quite in, uh, interesting you know, um, areas, and especially think that we should bear in mind you know, when we want to promote you know, this kind of partnership we need. Um, well, I think that our panelists have done well. You know, we are keeping on time, which is good, which gives us ample time for you know, uh, discussion, because this is also what matters here. Um, then what I will right now do is uh, well open up to, to, to the floor. And, uh, and but what we are trying to do here, is, of course, is we've uh, introduced you to the um, ICANN framework, of course. Uh, but we also want to share, you know, experiences, you know, throughout, and also see how best, you know, we could collaborate and in terms of partnership. So please um, uh, feel free and uh, put your question. And then just introduce yourself before you go. We are also having any online questions. Okay, great. We'll come back on that. So please, um, I hope the mic. Sorry, the mic is at the back. Okay, okay. So please, um, can you secure the mic, please? Oh, it's, it's here. Okay, let, let me go and get. Ah, uh, please come. Hi, uh, is this on? This is good. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, my name is Chuck Gomes. I'm from Verisign. Uh, Tiki, you, I think I heard you say that you thought the IANA transition should be separated from the general ICANN accountability. Uh, I understand there are two separate processes. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm curious as to why you think that, if I understood it correctly, and also uh, whether or not that's really possible to separate the two. So, okay, you can hear me. Um, what I have indicated is that there's a recognition that the IANA transition, uh, the process itself, is dip interdependent with uh, the process to improve ICANN's accountability overall. But in trying to achieve ICANN's accountability processes, that should be distinctly separated in terms of the mechanisms from the process that would, be, uh, that would apply to the IANA functions. Um, I also wanted to be able to very much clarify how, how that could be in place. Uh, a typical example is the GAC. The GAC's accountability process must be outside of the GAC itself. It must not be, um, how would you call it? It must not be that the GAC is subject to an internal, sorry, uh, an internal review process, but rather that should be completely independent of what currently exists. And I'm happy to have that conversation with a bit more detail later. Okay. Thank you, Titi. Um, anyone else would like to uh, chip in and any question or any, any um, observations? Uh, of course, vis-a-vis -vis the um, uh, ICANN framework, but of course, on uh, public interest in, in general. Chuck again? OK, Chuck, please. Uh, Chuck Gomes again. Oh, there was OK. Oh, okay. Did you, somebody else? Okay. Mm -hmm. All Go right. Ahead. Go ahead. It's Public okay. interest. Okay. Uh, by the way, the things all of you said, the, the, the list of, was it nine or ten things that Renali shared and, and uh, Nee shared things like uh, uh, inclusiveness and stability and security, those are all, I think, pretty well accepted uh, principle or things that we can all agree are in the public interest. But there's, there are also many diverging public interests, depending on what public you're talking about. How do we distinguish between those and uh, 
when we're looking to fulfill the public interest, not get distracted in, ser in just serving one subset of interests versus another subset of interests that may diverge. Um, we do have a gentleman. Oh, okay. Go ahead, please. Sorry. You are closer to the Can, mic. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Yes, I just wanted to maybe have a little bit of a follow-up on this, um, particularly with respect to what does the public interest mean in the... Introduce yourself, please. In, please. I'm too fast? Okay. Who the hell are you? My name is Robin Gross. I'm with IP Justice and the Non-Commercial Stakeholder Group at ICANN. Uh, so, going back to this issue of what is the public interest at ICANN, I think that's part of what the GNSO is set up to try to figure out where you get the different stakeholders together to talk about what the issues are, talk about what the concerns are, and try to compromise and, and come to a consensus that everyone can agree on. So um, I, I think that baking those sorts of uh, transparency type issues and openness issues into the GNSO process is the is really the way to achieve the public interest at ICANN. My concern is that the GNSO could go through a whole process and come up with policy recommendations that it had decided were in the public interest and then the decisions that those recommendations go up to the board and the board starts all over again with a new analysis of well does this recommendation meet the public interest and I feel like that's an opportunity to sort of reopen, rehash, um, incentivize lobbying, whether it's from the GAC or from a particular constituency, to try to change what the community came up with as being the public interest. So I think we want to bake these important um, principles into the existing policy development process, and that's the best way uh, to try to achieve the public interest um, in the ICANN policy development process, at least. Thank you. Thank you very much. You seem to be indicating that there may be um, uh, some uh, sort of competing interests at some point anyway. But we will come back on those. Uh, thank you. Yes, please. Uh, thanks. I'm Michaela Nalen. Speaking in my capacity as a dirty, filthy registrar that helps fund the ICANN party, um, I have, I have a, got a lot of concerns about the way that ICANN staff are framing some of, some of these things. Um, you know, ICANN's scope needs to be focused, it needs to be narrow. But it's, there's a, there seems to be this kind of runaway thing where anything and everything about making the internet better for, all the, for everybody and puppies and, and fluffy clouds all suddenly becomes within ICANN's scope which, to be perfectly honest, is ridiculous. And you really need to stop doing it, because you can't have a situation where, on the one hand, both registries and registrars are meant to provide a, a super-duper high level of service, meet exacting standards, deal with acting as arbiters for public interest, IP intellectual rights, uh, criminal this and that, and God knows what else, whilst also doing it in a cost-effective manner, whilst meantime, oh my God, we need to build up capacity in every single country in the world. Those don't work together, they're incompatible, and it's, I just don't see how on earth you can do all that. Now, I have no issue with ICANN or anybody within the ICANN space going off and trying to get more people involved up to a point, and I have no issue with the kind of high-level concept of education and all that kind of thing, but at this, the question I have is, you know, at what cost? Who's going to pay for it, and where do you draw the line? Thanks. Thank you very much for this, uh, those quite important, you know, questions you actually been. Uh, maybe we... Um, Fad, maybe we hear from a remote participation and then we, we come back in the room. Okay, so we have a question from remote participation from somebody called Quentin. So the question is, okay, <clears throat> sorry. So a question from Quentin. 
Uh, you speak about public interest, about internet governance, but it's very complex. Do you think people can understand that ICANN is organized by U.S. Associ Association and not by United Nations? Do you think the internet governance structure is simple for a large public? Okay, thanks very much. Um, at this point, uh, maybe one of our panelists uh, would like to respond to some of the questions, and then we'll uh, come back to the uh, room. Thank you. Or you start. Yeah. Um, okay. I think Chuck is very right that the more there are some things we can agree with as uh, being clearly our public interest, but the more we move further. Uh, it becomes doubtful whether some of those things are within our scope. And that's really, to me, where we have to be very careful. Uh, because uh, the intention is not for ICANN to solve everybody's problem. Uh, you know, that's not what uh, we can do. However, ICANN, over the years, had been called upon to do a variety of things, like fund people to attend meetings, provide some support for education, DNSSEC, and so on and so forth. And so uh, it makes sense to streamline those things as part of the goodwill that uh, ICANN is doing. Um, I think that's as far as I can say. Now, the other side um, uh, is I'm very pleased that you've observed that, in actual fact, it's for the SOs to drive you know, this public responsibility thing. Okay, in the sense that that's what you do, it's part of what you do, is to find the common things that we have consensus on. And it, that means that once the SOs begin to move in that direction, we'll have more effective uh, public responsibility programs. Because now it would have permeated <laughs> not only ICANN, but also the different committees. So I think that's a very, a very uh, uh, useful thing to hear, meaning that you could also adopt some of the same concepts and figure out how you want to uh, contribute in that direction by yourself, not by somebody pushing you, but by yourself uh, to improve things. Now, the other uh, thing that I can comment on is um, um, this is from the registrar side of things. Uh, I think we are always hesitant um, going too far from where, where we are. And the same applies to the work that we did. On the other hand, if you have scattered public interest activities occurring in the organization, practically every department has some program. It does make sense at some point to start to, you know, you might say harmonize them or coordinate them. And I think that is where the concept uh, may, be, may be coming from. Um, so I'm looking to see how the registrars may also figure out for themselves what they believe is an acceptable public interest contribution on their part. And that way, then it is truly bottom up, as opposed to uh, I can drive in uh, that. So that's what I can say for now. Oh, you're not quite satisfied. Okay, go ahead, please. And um, Michaeli Nalan again. Uh, just as you mentioned, registrars, and I happen to be one. What you're just saying there about the drawing the line, that's all well and good, but we actually can't because I can will basically throw that in under discretionary spending over which we have no control. And that's, it, it's not like you have a completely transparent um, ass assignment of all your spending. You, you have a hell of a lot of leeway and a lot of pet projects, and, and these are pet projects in the broadest possible sense, get shoved under discretionary spending. So if, you know, if ICANN wants to go off and fund, I don't know, some crazy project. It might be a wonderful concept, it might not be a bad thing, but the GNSO doesn't really have any way, apart from just whinging and whining, of, of actually saying, oh no, we don't support this, because it'll, it could be thrown under, dis under discretionary spending. Now, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, Chuck or somebody might, might be able to correct me on this, but I, I don't think I am. 
Thanks. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, Rinalia, you wanted to chip in. Please go ahead. Thank you, Pierre. Um, I wanted to say earlier that as a person from a developing country and as someone who have engaged ICANN in about three years, I fully appreciate the initiative that came out of the strategy panel because it is oriented towards outreach and capacity building because I can see how desperately needed it is. And if you look at the definition of global public interest that the panel uh, came up with, it's uh, floating the words stable internet, inclusive internet, accessible internet. Stability is definitely within the remit of ICANN. It's not irrelevant. Inclusiveness is quite important because if you, for example, focus on the policy development process of the generic name supporting organization or GNSO in ICANN itself, there was a study done uh, looking at a sample of policy development processes where they discovered that there was virtually zero input from the developing regions meaning Africa, Latin America, Asia Pacific. Now there are many reasons that can attribute to it, but certainly lack of understanding, lack of knowledge, and barriers in participation are certainly part of that equation. And initiatives such as the one that the strategy came up with is certainly needed. And how it affects the balancing of interests that I think was mentioned by Chuck earlier and also Robin, when you play in the pool of the GNSO and you have a multitude of interests that you have to balance, when dealing with specific policy issues, there is a responsibility to ensure that all the interests are represented. And when there are gaps in representation, the recommendations may not necessarily be the best recommendation for the overall community. So it, you can see it from either side, whether it's, it's relevant or irrelevant. I actually think that it can be channeled to the more relevant uh, in terms of scope for ICANN. Thank you, Rinalia. Um, short comment from um, TT. Yes, I just had a, a really short comment. Um, I, I've tried to keep my interventions like really specific. Um, you recall that one of my points is around replication ensuring that there's not necessarily too much replication and then there's also a connectivity in, 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 in projects that are currently being done. I think um, Rinali has been very specific to identify how it sits within the remit of ICANN. But where it begins to show that ICANN is stepping out of its core functions is where ICANN can then draw in terms of accountability. It, it can actually draw on the strength of the existing members to be able to, um, like an extended arm, to bring about some of this capacity building and educational projects. Um, if I can give an example, a lot of the work that I'm currently doing across Sub-Saharan Africa as the policy lead for Google is to enable local organizations have a better understanding of the various issues mm -hmm. that pertain, so from access to uh, being able to understand how policies around freedom of expression, around privacy, around data protection, all connect and feed into the wider process. And I think that's why there's the consistent messaging that, in general, this is a, the, an internet governance forum. It's not just about ICANN, it's not just about the um, IEEE, it's not just about whatever other initiatives show up, but it's actually about being able to ensure that the ecosystem is connected, can work together, and strengthen each other. Uh, I, I have been trying to avoid this word all week, but multi-stakeholderism should not just be about having all the voices at the table, but also ensuring that the various voices are able to pitch in and be strengthened where they have the most expertise. And I think that's where ICANN needs to get it a bit better, and I think it's a bit more aware of that fact. Okay. Uh, Nevin, you wanted to... Thank you, Pierre. Actually, I think that Titi has uh, expressed what I wanted to say quite clearly. Uh, what is meant about uh, maybe going into capacity building and uh, other uh, activities that are necessary for the developing countries is not uh, having, uh, for instance, I can uh, starting uh, reinventing the wheel, but maybe joining forces and not investing in very diversified directions, uh, but uh, maybe building on existing efforts that exist and uh, trying to uh, harmonize or consolidate these efforts. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one of the other questions we're having in mind is um, the following, and I would like you to actually react to it, uh, which is uh, how do public uh, interest or responsibility programs, you know, advance the cause of a free and open internet? So anyone has um, any ideas to share on that, that question, please? 
Uh, question is how do public interest or responsibility programs advance the cause of a free and open internet? In your views. It's a bit tricky. <laughs> is that tricky enough? <laughs> Because I think we should have thought this is quite um, obvious, but still there were questions about it. And uh, I think this, this also came up in the course of um, developing this, this framework, you know. Um, that how do this really advance the cause of a free and open internet? A straightforward, Chuck. Uh, thanks, Chuck Gomes again. Uh, I, I hope I'm understanding your question correctly, Pierre. Mm. Uh, correct me if I'm not. Mm. Uh, the, to the extent that the public interest is, how should I say it, appropriately represented by certain organizations, I, I think that's an easy one. I think we all, uh, those, everybody that wants a free and open internet uh, that's a public interest for us. But there are organizations, including governments, in our world that don't want that and don't represent what maybe the individual user might want as free and so forth. So I guess all I'm doing, that's, that's a reality that's in our world that we want to change assuming that we all agree that a free and open internet is the right way to go, which I certainly support. Uh, but it is a, that is something we have to deal with uh, in terms of the work that we're doing. Uh, and I, I don't have any easy answers. I, I suspect nobody does. Uh, but that is, that is a factor that affects the public interest. Now, governments that are very authoritarian and, uh, I mean, they, they believe they're protecting the public interest, mm -hmm. but they may not be supporting a free and open internet. So how do we deal with that? I, I, I'm sure all of us would like to find a magic solution there, but it's, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much. And uh, actually, uh, there should be ways in which we really um, strike the balance, you know, um, between all of those um, uh, sort of contradictory or whatever we will say, uh, public um, interest. Um, but also we should be able to kind of think uh, out of the box and then uh, uh, that's why we were insisting on the whole issue of how best to collaborate uh, on, on, on those issues. And that's what it's all about, you know, this framework is about collaboration. And Titi was also uh, right in saying that we should not be replicating and uh, then it also becomes an issue of getting focused, you know, on what we uh, intend to, to achieve here. Um, well, uh, and then, of course, this relates also to human rights, you know, how do and, uh, and development, you know, component of it. And, uh, but then I come back to a question that was being posed by a friend from Registrar, who pays for all of this? He has this question to us, and uh, we haven't really responded to him. Who pays for this? Um, so certainly, for, for, from my perspective, uh, a lot of the pain for it will come from um, I can has previously come from I can, but I think what has been missing is the ability to be able to independently audit. And I think you made reference to it when you said discretionary funding, and what process? Uh, how does that happen? I think certainly there is some value to saying that as part of the accountability uh, mechanism and improvement on it that I have mentioned previously, is being able to have the community actually interrogate that to a larger extent. And I think that's fair enough. Um, uh, we actually submitted a very detailed document around uh, uh, suggestions around um, how we can better work as ICANN. And I'm happy to share, I, I believe it should be public on the, on the ICANN website, but if it's, it isn't, like I mentioned to Chalk, I'm, I'm willing to be able to you know, identify some of these points that we've been able to, to share with ICANN and where we need to be able to take it forward. Um, who pays for it? Um, if we want to see change, 
a lot of that change will come from us. And it will be painful at first, but until we can get the conversations, these conversations uh, to be owned by a lot more people, the cost will continue to come from us. Come from us as registrars, as registries, as private sector, as civil society, as governments who are willing to commit to it. That's where it sits. And I see you shaking your head very vigorously, but until we can do a better job of actually communicating why it is important, it will continue to come from us. But he said that he's so why, hands I mean, sorry, but I mean, why should private, small private companies such as mine finance, civil society, and everybody else. I mean, I have no problem with civil society, but I don't see why the hell I should be footing their bill. Now, a, a, a global multi-billion dollar corporation that wants to, to put money into these things and get, get a nice tax write-off, fine. But I don't, you know, just saying that we should pay for this is completely ridiculous, because at the same time, you're talking about building up capacity in certain parts of the world, so you're also saying that by the same token, the, the one registrar in, in Morocco is meant to be financing the development of infrastructure across the rest of the continent of Africa. Meanwhile, he's trying to actually pay for hosting pay and provide a decent level of service while he's going head to head with, oh wait, the global multi-billion dollar companies such as Google, Facebook, Twitter and everything else that is eating his lunch. I mean, the thing is this, is that you know, you're just simply saying we were going to have to continue to pay for it, I'm afraid, is rather facetious. I'm willing to take it very quickly, but I will take it with my Google hat off and come back to you with this, that if you can understand the concept that in trying to build your business to a sustainable level, you need to be able to continue to ensure you have a very um, uh, a wide base of, you, of consumers or customers, you will see the sense in actually investing in it. And when you think about it, it's not necessarily about just investing in places, quote unquote, because I believe that's your inference that are far off, is actually within your community as well. If you can identify the need within your community, certainly it can be reinterpreted. With the Google back on, it makes good business sense. It might not show in terms of return on investment immediately, but it makes good business sense if you want to be around beyond the next 10 years, beyond the next 15 years. I thought I will uh, come in on this. Um, part of the work of the panel was to suggest that we should actually co-subordinate from other partners uh, the solution for public interest where we have a common interest. In other words, it's not for everything to fall on ICANN or for that matter the GNSO and so on, but to seek out who can partner on what issues so that we, we expand the net. Meaning that it's not, if you remember in the definition, we first point out that we are not alone. We are in an ecosystem with different parties with different interests, maybe also with their own public responsibility programs. So it's more a question of how do we uh, collaborate in some sense to raise whatever funding is needed. Uh, in some cases, the collaboration will have to be with governments because not all IG issues are global. You know, sometimes the internet governance issues are also national. So it's rather just opening the door for us to find a different way of cooperating uh, to, in some sense, improve the lot of, of, of the people who are even not yet on the internet, roughly. Uh, thank you for this. Um, any of the, you want to chip in uh, before we? You have a few, okay, small comments. Okay, go ahead and then we'll yeah. move to the other question. Actually, a small comment and maybe a request for uh, more clarification from me. I think there was also the idea of a foundation. Uh, so if you could uh, elaborate a little bit on that, you'd be in a better position than me to do so. Well, the recommendation was first, let's have a department that focuses on this. And then the department is supposed to make proposals uh, to ICANN community on how to go about focusing on the foundation. I don't know exactly how far we are with that, but it was part of the plan. But it started with having a department that in some sense uh, mainstreams, you know, and, and it's, as it was pointed out, 
is not to take the activity from the departments, but to actually reinforce uh, the other departments to do it, but have it visible. Because what we discovered was that there was a lot going on, and it had not been pulled together in one place. So that was the first time that all of these activities had somehow been pulled together to say, hey, look, it looks like we are doing a lot of things, and it falls in these buckets. Uh, so I'm looking for uh, that sort of approach. Thank you, Whitney. Um, I think what we would like to... Yeah, Chuck, you have something? Okay, before. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, thanks again, Pierre. It's Chuck Holmes again. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to make clear that I'm very supportive of the uh, effort to reach out to those that are not part of our processes now. Uh, uh, Robin mentioned the GNSO, and... Uh, it's every policy development effort we do is open to everyone, but we can't get to everyone. So what, you're, what, you're, what, what the panel has recommended, and in particular the strategic panel I was talking about in particular, but each of you I think individually too, uh, is good for the GNSO. Because we certainly, as was suggested, are trying to reach out more and, and, and uh, get involvement from those who aren't yet involved. And it's, it's, it's helpful when we're establishing consensus, in fact, essential, that we get all the viewpoints. But there are limitations in terms of who we're going to reach. So uh, I personally you know, I th think you're in a, going in a good direction. And, and to deal with Michaela, some of Michaela's concerns, uh, to the extent that that outreach is getting people involved in the policy development processes that we have, that's needed and it's very valuable and I commend it. Now, back to the funding question, and, and I'm going to say it a little bit differently than Michaela did. Uh, first of all, I'll state a fact, and the fact is that we know where the funds come from. 95% of them come from registrant fees that are paid through registries and registrars or more. 95%. I'm not complaining about that, okay? Uh, Michaela's got some, some points there that we need to focus on and realize. Uh, but that's where 95% of ICANN's revenue comes from and has for many years, okay? And, and again, I'm not stating that as a complaint, just it's a, a data point. Uh, uh, so it is important that the accountability of how those funds are used and using them for what you're suggesting, Ni, from the, from the strategic panel and so forth, in my opinion, to help us do a better job of policy development is appropriate. And now, to the extent that we go beyond ICANN's mission, and several of you addressed that too, uh, then we need, I think, to, to look at that. But, but uh, I'm supportive of using it to help us get better involvement. Now, with regard to the three regions, that are underserved. I, I don't think they said, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think they said there was no participation because I've been involved in too many working groups where we have had people from Asia and Latin America. It has been more, much more uh, uh, limited with regard to Africa, although I'm involved in a working group right now where we have uh, one of our co-chairs, in fact, is, is, is from Africa. So it's, it's improving. Long ways to go. And so, so uh, I think that's, that, that's a good sign. We have some goals to improve that. So, so thanks. Mm. Oh, yeah, thank you, Chuck. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, this is Robin Gross again. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to make a comment about this uh, new uh, development and public responsibility department at ICANN. Um, it's interesting that, that ICANN is creating this department um, to apparently figure out what the public interest is. Um, but I'm, con I'm concerned, okay, I'm sorry about that. I'll speak close, closer to the microphone. But it's interesting because for many, many years, a number of us at ICANN have been asking them to uh, reach out to uh, privacy commissioners and privacy 
uh, data protection officers in different countries and try to incorporate their views into the ICANN uh, policy development process. And we've said, we need a privacy officer. We need a privacy officer at ICANN. And that hasn't happened yet. Um, so I'm wondering if anyone has any idea to what extent this, this new department will deal with human rights and ICANN's obligation to respect internet users' human rights, for example, the privacy rights of uh, internet users and particularly with respect to the who is uh, database. And we've got a workshop this afternoon with um, Article 29 Working Party and uh, a number of other um, experts on privacy issues to talk about how ICANN's policy, who is policy, um, is in clear violation of a number of national and international legal obligations with respect to uh, privacy rights. Um, so it would be wonderful if we could start to direct some attention and some concern within ICANN on actually incorporating these rights and these responsibilities into their own policies. And so I'm wondering if anyone has any ideas about this new department and whether or not that's an issue of focus or one of, one of it falls within one of these primary tracks that it will be uh, undertaking. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this. Um, uh, of course, we will bring this up to the department. Of course, this is a good suggestion. Um, um, don't really know whether there is any um, program, you know, around you know human rights. Uh, but uh, uh, definitely, we'll convey this uh, message to the uh, leader of this department. Botney, you want to chip in? Um, okay, I think we had advised we stay as close as possible to the core mission of ICANN, at least in the first instance. Uh, and a, a major part was to uh, the build out of a community to the regions and the countries was a major aspect of it. Okay. Now, I think the caution is where we draw the line. You know, meaning as we move away from the core mission, there may be others who do a much better job at addressing human rights uh, and we would like to work with them rather than necessarily assume the role because I don't know where within the ICANN objectives I can nail that. I, I think you understand where I'm coming from. So, so we support it. I'm sure everyone would like to make sure that human rights are, you know, are maintained on the, on the internet. Um, but we also have to be very careful because as you go out of the core mission, you begin to deal, have to deal with more divergent views. And it may be much more effective to kind of co-subordinate with others who are known to address those issues. And then we kind of collaborate with them, and especially in the build out. Uh, so that's how I'll react to that. Uh, if it and can I just quickly and then maybe. Um, just indicate that I don't want to sound like a broken record, but that goes back to the same compliance and accountability, uh, independence of accountability that would be suitable to address that particular issue as well. Uh, this is where sometimes I differ. I think ICANN is much more accountable to the community than most other organizations. I mean, it doesn't mean that we don't work at improving it, uh, but we should not paint it as though ICANN is not, uh, you know, transparent and not accountable. I think ICANN does a fairly strong job and we look for ICANN to do more, and we will all, you know, in some sense, translate that into our individual groups uh, to it all become more accountable in the process. But we should put it in the right light that over the years, uh, ICANN has become more and more accountable, uh, maybe not yet where we want to be because it's handling a lot of issues, um, and more complex issues are also coming. Um, so. I just want you to take heart that uh, it's coming. Okay. Thanks for this heart you are wearing. Oh, Rinalia, please go ahead. Sorry, when you talk about human rights, everybody starts jumping in. Uh, actually, Robin, I actually see the human rights issue as crucial content that is being delivered in the context of the outreach and capacity building, because I think it's absolutely important for stakeholders who are coming in the ICANN system or the internet governance ecosystem as a whole to have a better understanding of it, to, to guide their participation, um, to 
help make the organization put the correct attention to the issues. So I don't see it as um, appointing a particular person to be responsible for that, but actually ensuring that it cuts across and permeates the content of what is delivered um, with regards to this department. I actually don't know much about this department. I think it's quite new and it's just emerging and I think they're exploring what their scope should be and how many people should be handling it. So I think that we may get more clarity as we get to the um, ICANN public meeting in uh, Los Angeles in October. Okay, thanks. Yes? Okay, uh, I've got a question. Okay, then we go to a remote participation. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Please. Okay, cool. Uh, my name is Gabriel from Isoha Thing, South Africa. Now, what I'd like to find out is that we know the status of uh, ICANN accredited trials in Africa, that you've got four or five. I might be wrong, but you can correct me there. What my question is, what would be the role of uh, this new department regarding the support and growth of uh, ICANN accredited registrars in, in, in Africa? So your question is about how best ICANN could support uh, registrars in Africa, meaning increasing numbers of them or? Yeah, actually increasing the, the okay. numbers of them, because currently, I mean, the, the ISP business model, you know, in Africa is still, still, still in its fancy, fancy stages, you know, and there is potential for growth in that field. So the role of this department, when it comes to that, what will be its role to, 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 to support that growth? Thank you very much. Oh, of course, you also well known that uh, ICANN is implementing what we are calling an Africa strategy, and the core of it is, in fact, to support you know the uh, development of uh, kind of African market, you know, for the domain name, and this goes you know through different you know workshop and also uh, exposure of the. Um, uh, the registrar registries, you know, to some of the best practices, you know, there. Uh, we are having training, for instance, on um, uh, on IP, you know, right? But those are things that ICANN is already doing, you know, within its uh, its strategy. Now, how do you uh, help them, you know, grow? Um, we happen to have, I think NIS here, NIS is one of those, you know, accredited registrar. Actually, we are having eight of them right now uh, from Africa. Uh, maybe Nick will best, you know, elaborate on what it takes to maybe grow that market, please. I am I'm a small registrar, um, but I'm not sure the answer is more necessarily. Uh, Hamza, the registrar from here, makes that point very strongly. Now, what you want is strong and successful registrars, not hundred of them, okay, and they are all not making money. So uh, that debate will go on for some time, okay. Now, I think the department did not drill down to that level, I mean, the discussion around the department did not drill down to that level because it's evidently that is more GNSO interest, but the department was looking at how do we build out a community Okay, so more people in this country or other countries participating in ICANN and then joining the different uh, aspects of ICANN is the surest way. And how do we collaborate with others who are very effective in certain areas that maybe we are not? Okay, so that we can collaborate with them. Meaning, we, I don't believe that the, uh, the, the drafters of the concepts here had in mind that they will be the, the department be the one to implement everything. Because to start with, the department is collaborating with other departments. And where the departments don't have a focal program and it's a new program, then this new department will mainstream it. Okay? And the same, I imagine, will be true of the different SOs. Because we have to, the department has to work through other organizations. It can't just by itself go and do it because it may not even have the expertise. Thank you very much. Um, um, you want to, is it on that, on the register thing? Okay, please, and then we'll take the remote, please, uh, later on. Uh, Michaeli Nealon, this time speaking as chair of the Registrar Stakeholder Group, since I like changing hats. Um, with respect to the entire thing around the 
the African strategy and registrars and everything else. Um, we've had meetings with most of the ICANN senior execs on this. I mean, one of the areas that we have agreed needs to be addressed is with respect to the entire accreditation process. Um, that's been identified as being very, very problematic. Um, while the Africans may wish to consider it to be a terrible problem for Africans, believe me, you're not alone. Uh, the Europeans have issues with it because the way the entire thing was set up was um, from an American perspective. So if you go to an Irish insurance company and ask them for, say, the insurance, insurance as written and described on the ICANN webpage, the most insurance people would just look at you like you had three heads because it's, it's an American concept. Um, I've personally met with Akram on this as well, and there was a common period about two months ago, I think it was. One of you should know. Um, looking at this entire thing, but part of the problem, of course, is that the problem itself wasn't framed very clearly. Because the, the, it's talking about a problem, but without actually defining the problem within criteria, narrow enough criteria that anybody could say, well, okay, this is what we need to fix. Um, because obviously the thing is that you don't want a situation where you have just to kind of tick a few boxes, instead of having five registrars, you now have a hundred, but oh wait, they're all bankrupt because obviously that's not going to help anybody. Um, there is work ongoing there. Uh, one of the people within the Registrar liaison, t liaison team, Amy Bivens, is the main person dealing with it. Um, and if you, want to, if you want to talk to me directly about it as well, you know, I'm not that hard to find. Thanks. Um, I didn't want to go in, but let me illustrate some challenges new registrars face. Um, when it was a handful of registries, we knew what to do, put money in each registries, and then now you have a thousand registries. I cannot go put money, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 places. That would be one million dollars. Aha. So, so the GTLD is introducing new challenges, especially for new entrants. And I don't know how we we'll resolve it. And even EPP, you may, we may have to come up with a new structure that once I connect, then I can reach all. I suppose to have to, you know, interconnect with each one of the registries. So there are some challenges that the new entrants face, and I just leave it like that. No, leave it like that. We are actually working on that. We do have, as you mentioned, this um, work, work, ongoing work on the um, support to underserved, you know, region. And those issues are being uh, uh, discussed, and hopefully we'll end up with some uh, solutions. Uh, we do have yeah, remote, uh, yeah, there's a question there uh, online, please. Fired. So it's not a question, really. It's actually a comment from Noura Abu Sitta, who's, the vice pre who's ICANN's vice president for public responsibility programs. And she says, uh, ICANN did not establish the department, which is the public responsibility department. Uh, to define public interest and public responsibility. It established it to formalize the work already done in this space uh, and build uh, on existing efforts. And th then she goes on to say, the panel developed these definitions and gave clear recommendations on way forward. I mean, it's putting focus on what we are, we've been talking about here, which is quite good. I think before we uh, uh, join this, I would like us to eventually share uh, some of the experiences there, uh, uh, because we heard about what ICANN would like to be doing. Uh, maybe it's also interesting for us to, to share what are the best, you know, um, example of case or you wanted to share, you know, with us in terms of, you know, public um, uh, interest on the internet, you know, arena. So I would like to pass it over to you uh, if you do have any uh, experience to share or any specific question to raise about this uh, before we adjourn. Okay. Do we have any anyone? Okay, at the back, there, please. Hi, my name is Ms. Tura. I'm from Nigeria. I work with the regulator. Um, can you hear me now? Okay. 
Yeah, um, personally, I would like to share my experience because my journey with ICANN started in 2010 when I became a fellow. And believe me, there are just few um, um, people attending the meeting from um, the developing countries. So, but now I think um, there is more awareness and with um, the um, the setup of the um, when Fadi came in is um, is set up. Um, what was it called? Was it like a regional meeting? The one we had in um, Ethiopia in Addis Ababa. A lot of people came in, and there is more awareness right now. And I think what we should do is to urge more people to from the developing countries to take the advantage to join and see what we can gain from here. But because believe me, from um, where we started from to now, I think there has been a lot of um, improvement. Um, a lot of, for, for my own country, Nigeria, a lot of um, registrars never knew they, there is um, Afrinic where they could connect rather than going to foreign countries. And I think with um, the Afrinic, um, 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 what is it um, the Afrinic um, IPv6 um, training they've been doing up and down because they were in um, Nigeria two times last year and even this year they've been there. I think there has been more awareness. So I think it's a very good contribution and um, more people are now interested in um, the internet because this internet is for everybody. That's just my own contribution. There is a gentleman at the back of the room. I know him as Edmund Chong, and I know that he has some projects and programs that actually help build capacity as part of their organizational public responsibility initiative. Do you want to say something about that? Um, thank you, Renalia, for pointing me out. Um, Edmund Chong here from Dot Asia. Sorry I barged in and it was a little bit late. Um, so I'm kind of out of context of what we are <laughs> discussing here, but from what you were just asking, um, I guess Start Asia supports a number of uh, different programs, including uh, a, a youth program that, that we try to bring uh, young people to, to the internet governance discussion here at IGF, but also uh, on uh, supporting uh, like the uh, a, an R and D grants fund and a digital inclusion grants fund that that ha help uh, fund projects that um, have capacity building uh, components into it, uh, especially leading towards both access, but not only just access, uh, also um, help uh, uh, getting people. I guess activated to be able to participate in uh, internet uh, dis uh, internet governance discussions. So I think that's uh, sort of one of the threads that uh, Dot Asia tries to uh, uh, promote. If I'm if I'm on on a topic, that uh, hopefully I I am. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this. Um, of course, we did hear about, so, I mean, many uh, uh, things here. We, of course, we didn't dwell into definition or concept or, uh, per se. Uh, we introduced, you know, ICANN's framework and uh, good questions were raised. Uh, I think some of the key uh, words to, to bear in mind here is about, you know, how do we strike the appropriate balance, you know, between uh, uh, different, you know, um, public interest. And they were worried about accountability, for instance, and also openness and strategic partnership that we could build, and uh, that's quite great. Of course, issue surrounding you know, human rights also is there. And the key question about who pays for what, we uh, received some um, kind of responses for those. Uh, now we would like to um, give some I'm a brief, you know, second to our panelists if they really want to cover anything uh, before we uh, we adjourn this session. So over to our panelists if you want to uh, to add anything, and then we okay. Okay. so you start. Okay. Yeah, uh, for me very brief. I think this is a good thing. Uh, we just have to figure out how to make it work, and we have to form the right partnerships uh, with those who may be more uh, appropriate for certain divergent areas. And on the whole, the more partners we have, including development organizations, uh, the better we'll be able to build the community out. To share your 
Okay, um, last thoughts, accountability again. So accountability has been in existence within ICANN. It can get very much better, and I think that's why there's a lot of emphasis right now, because it's also seen as a critical player to ensure that we don't lose the, the balance that we are working towards around multi-stakeholder uh, governance of the internet. Second is the continuing emphasis on finding the right sets of partners to be able to help us um, actually implement a lot of the very laudable goals that we have in place. Um, and third and final is the fact that change is always painful, uncomfortable, but we have an opportunity to really um, rewrite history and move us forward, and we should make the very best of it. Great. Levin? Thank you, Pierre. Uh, Nora has made quite an interesting comment uh, pointing out that uh, the role of this department is really uh, to consolidate what has been uh, taking place. What I'm hoping for is that the efforts done on the regional level, the regional strategies, would uh, always be a, a strong input to the work of this department as a bottom-top uh, uh, approach. Uh, the other thing I'm hoping for is that there will be a very clear KPIs to the work of the department uh, to move ahead. Thank you. Um, I only have one point to make, and it's not to summarize the session. I just wanted to say that when we agree that in the initiative will have positive spillover effects and will be generally good across the board, we should not be hung up over the financing issue because there are solutions that can be found to address that. And you don't have to assume that ICANN has to bear all the cost, because with the right level of partnership, you can actually diversify the risk of handling that cost and be able to deliver the programs worldwide. So don't use funding as an excuse for not doing something that's considered to be good in the global public interest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rinalia. No excuse, I like this. Uh, thanks for our panelists. Thanks for you for your question and the contribution well. And then a round of applause to our panelists who deserve this. Yeah, then we adjourn this session. Thank you. You're welcome.